athlete and co-founder of Max Muscle Hawaii. Now, what is very special about Michael and that we all might want to rise for is that he's a veteran. You are a veteran. Welcome to the show, Michael. Oh, great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for that. That's just, mm. your story is amazing. And you've given service to this country as an immigrant. So let's start from the beginning. Your journey is also very unique. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how you came about being an immigrant in the United States. Uh, first, foremost, I just want to acknowledge your story, uh, about your boat story. Uh, and that's, that's exactly it. Uh, when Dr. J shared the hard work, th the sacrifice, you lost your sister. I know. One of the many stories, the sacrifice, the, tr the road we come along to be in America, to have the freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's why I serve my country. I want to be, I, I'm a proud American. You know, I'm a proud American, and I served the Marines five years in the M Marines. Yes. Uh, and that's the reason I want to fight. I want to work for my freedom. Yes. You came to this country as a baby. How old were you? Yeah, when you I came? was. Uh, um, you know, I had a life in Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, Kharkiv. Uh, I was 12 years old. Yes. I, I actually remember just about everything uh, at that point, and I was adopted with a brother. Okay. And he's two years younger. Mm-hmm. And he, he's young enough where he, where he kind of became Americanized in the sense that um, uh, the the American dream kind of faded, if I may say. He's just at that right age yes. where, where he, he kind of grandfathered, uh, if I may say, entitled into the America culture mm -hmm. right away yes. of not working as hard because the parents provided. Um, and myself, I kind of went on my own route yes. because I knew at 12 years old, mm -hmm. I knew – the hardships I went through, I've seen my my neighbors die. I mean, I was five years old. I was just shocked. I just put reality check. <laughs> I know <laughs> right away, right? Exactly. Uh, and and always, but one thing I had in me as as an Ukraine mm -hmm. as a little boy and now is that I would always save up my. I would always save change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you. I, I had to manage your money. Yeah, I I <laughs> would go uh, around the neighborhood in Ukraine collect uh, bottles. You know, wow. I, I mean, I got like fifty cents. I was just so proud because. So you've always I, had that entrepreneurial spirit. I've always about had you. that in me because I knew that if I had money, I could buy food because I never had food. Mm. And that was a start. Yes. I could feed myself. So, yeah, so that was my question. Like, where did you get the zest for entrepreneurship? So that started way, way mm. back in the Ukraine. So what is Max Muscle Hawaii about, and what's your vision behind that business? Well, Max Muscle uh, is a franchise. There's 150 locations in the United States, mm -hmm. and we we have a location in Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, and we're kind of branded to our own unique location. With You're a co-founder. Yes. One uh, well, for Max Muscle Hawaii branch, okay. that is, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I, I bought, basically, got through, <laughs> I just, somehow I acquired the business. That's mm -hmm. how that worked, because it was willing and motivated, and it just landed into my lap, and I took the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's So it's a franchise. Okay. It's one of the franchises in Hawaii. So as someone who you acquired the business, what do you take into consideration when choosing the kind of business to invest in because you're not only a business owner, you're an investor. And I know you've probably invested in more than one business. Yeah, that's a very <laughs> good point, um, Pamela. I, you know, I'm an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I won multiple shows, championships in Hawaii, California. I went to Mr. Olympia. So mm -hmm. I've always had that athletic drive, uh, and I've always liked the supplements, right, the <coughs> supplements, of the what the, they could do to the body, uh, and protein. Okay. I, so that came with the having max muscle, so I acquired that through uh, investment. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just one of the many, many, many um, things that I do. Mm -hmm. That was early on in my early 20s. So how do you combine acting and the business, or do the two go together? Because you're also an actor. Yes. Your life is uh, full circle uh, in yeah, Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's... I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. um, life is, is it is as Larry knows is very stressful. It can be very stressful, uh, and I want I'm an artist because I can escape the reality okay. and I can act. I could behave realistically in imaginary circumstances, and it's that's wonderful and that's what acting to me is all about. That's why I'm an actor. That's good. And then now I want to talk to you about the fact that you served in the military. And today, we're gonna, mm -hmm. I mean, we can't have this conversation without getting into that, how immigrants' contributions mm -hmm. in the military, mm -hmm. you did that. Mm -hmm. 
And how do you feel about the fact that Americans may not understand the values mm -hmm. that immigrants bring to this country? Uh, Or maybe some do, I guess, not everybody, but. You know, just in my unit alone, we had immigrants. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so proud because yes. we were brothers. We're brothers because mm -hmm. we went through the same thing and we just share that same common denominator, always uh, always working hard for, for our country, you know. We, we were told what to do. We did it without questions, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, people came from all over the world. Yes. Uh, and, you know, they were they were raised here and they served their country just like I did. Same purpose. Yes. So, I mean, you have done so well. And um, I just want to know a little bit about the family that adopted you. Did they have any influence? They impact your influence you in oh, any way what you do today? Uh, absolutely. Wanna acknowledge them yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you, Pamela. Um, you know, my mother, she's a lawyer. Okay. Um, she, she also got her MBA, and she's JD now. And she has a twin, mm -hmm. also a lawyer, and they own their law firm. So we're, we're very competitive in our family. I got to I, I gotta, I gotta strive to be at least, at, you know, on that level of education and um success if but I you are say. very educated yourself um, i i do have my mba yes. i got my mba when i was 26 and yes. i got my finance degree because I, i like uh, i like finance and helping people uh and i want to go on and get my phd at one of the you know, yeah. more lucrative universities yeah you know i reason. wanted to highlight the fact that you were adopted because a lot of sometimes americans feel that you know it's a problem for some of them when people adopt children from abroad. Mm -hmm. They feel like there are kids, enough kids in America that mm -hmm. you can take care mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone hadn't given you that opportunity, think about the service. Yeah. So what do you say to other Americans that might be considering adopting children abroad and for those who think they shouldn't? You know, it, it all depends. It really all depends. Mm -hmm. I, I just can speak on my behalf that uh, I'm the blessed one that got adopted. Yes. Uh, my parents went out of their way with, at that time, they had stacks of cash, like $15,000 on each side to get through the airports and wow. had to report all that stuff. Just to, They put their life in danger to get me in Ukraine in 2002. Yes. Uh, and at that time, it was shortly after the breakup of USSR, mm -hmm. just, just a decade after the breakup. So the government's still trying to stabilize and people still trying to find work. So it, anything they said, oh, American, oh, American, oh, good money. They see dollars, dollar signs mm -hmm. in their eyes. And... Uh, um, I, I, I acknowledge that today. Yes. Um, so, Mom, if you're listening, I love you. <laughs> and I acknowledge you for that. That's but early on, I, I, as a kid, I, you know, yes. uh, just like most of us, we, we uh, want to get A's. And that's, that was what it was expected of us. And I thought, I, I hated my parents, right? <laughs> oh, they're, they're slave drivers, right? I got to get an A. <laughs> I got to clean the house. But today, as a young man, I acknowledge yes. why they did what they did. Have you gone back to the Ukraine? I, I go back every year. Um, um, I'm four, fourth time now to be going back. Uh, it's great. I do philanthropy work with the kids, teach them English. Um, I give back to the community. It's fun watching their little faces light up when I give them food, apples, and a little bit of candy because that was me. That's I awesome. Because really you can relate to that yeah. and you can empathize. So what's next for Michael? I right have – Uh, that's a great question. I have some <laughs> goals uh, with the philanthropy endeavor. Yes. I want to open up organizations uh, in our organization in Ukraine uh, that's going to educate ki kids. Um, I always go back to uh, the saying, if you can, uh, you know, you can cure. Uh, Bright would says this. Bright said this. Uh, excuse me. He, he said. Who's Bright? Bright. To our listeners. Uh, yeah. Who um, know who Bright is. We, I'm involved with a company called the Duo Blockchain Solutions, and, and we have a wonderful uh, co-founder, Bright Anubileli. He's also you know, an, an immigrant, and he always said it's, it's easy to fight hunger, but if you could manage poverty, then they could, they could sustain themselves, right? And that's my idea with the philanthropy. I could teach kids how to sustain themselves Absolutely. versus give, teach them so they can pass that down. And that's the whole idea. Thank you so much, Michael. Very inspiring. You're a man of few words, but you say yeah. very important things. Now, I hope our listeners paid attention because so much wisdom and empathy and heart in all our immigrant stories. So thank you so much and uh, hope you come back next time. We've come to the end of our show. I hope you had a fabulous time with us. See you next time on Impact with Pamela Angel.